Hi folks, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we will discuss about the gestational trophoblastic disease. It is a group of the disease which contains the abnormal or the disorganized proliferation of the trophoblastic tissue, which is mainly the cytotrophoblast and the syncytotrophoblast. So further, it, this group is divided into the non-neoplastic category and the neoplastic category. So here in this picture, the above, uh, above uh, these uh, represents the non-neoplastic or the pre-neoplastic conditions while the bottom portion of the picture represents the neoplastic category. So in this video series, we will discuss mainly about the partial hydratiform mold. And in the next video, we will discuss about the complete hydratiform mold. So here in this picture, in the perineoplastic conditions, we can see that the complete hydratiform mold does not contain any fetal portion, while in the partial hydratiform mold, we can see that there is some portion of the fetal tissue and some hydropic villi, which we will discuss today. While in the neoplastic category, here we can see that it contains the invasive mold, choriocarcinoma, which loves to invade the vessels and then can involve the lungs. And the other neoplastic category is the placental side trophoplastic tumor, which occurs mainly as the site of the implantation. So in this video, we will mainly focus on the partial hydratiform mold. So what are the risk factors for the overall molar pregnancy? It includes the maternal age, when the age is below 20 years, or when the age is above 35 years. History of previous molar pregnancy, history of previous spontaneous abortion or infertility, or diet deficient in the vitamin A precursor carotene, or lack of uh, animal fats diet, history of smoking, or the genetic predisposition. While discussing about the partial hydrity form mole, so as the name implies, partial means there will be the normal, some normal portion and some abnormal portion. While literally the meaning of hydrity form mold is the presence of the edematous villi. So as the name implies, the definition we can uh, make is that the abnormal coronic villi, which consists, the, consists of the spectrum of the villus population ranging from the normal size and, and also the very enlarged edematous villi, which contains the irregular counters and they also contains the focal trophoblastic hyperplasia. We will discuss these features when we discuss about the histology. And what is the pathogenesis for the formation of the partial hydratiform mold? Is that when there is a normal egg which contains the haploid number, when it is fertilized by the two spermatozoa and cause the formation of the triploidy, which is occurs in the 90% of the cases. Or the other theory is that when the normal egg is fertilized by the one spermatozoa and then that spermatozoa undergoes reduplication and cause the formation of the triploidy, which can lead to the partial hydratiform mold. So in this picture, it is that uh, here we can see that there is a normal ovum which contains the haploid number of the chromosome when it is fertilized by the two spermatozoa, so it will lead to the formation of the triploidy. While this is occur mainly in the 90% of the partial hydratiform mold, while in the 10% of the cases, what happened when there is a one spermatozoa with a haploid number of chromosome fertilize the normal ovum and then there is a reduplication of that spermatozoa and leads to the formation of the triploidy, which is less common and in, it occurs only in the 10% of the cases. Here, we can also see that there is a normal ovum. So in the partial hydratiform mold, there will be some components of the maternal genes and there will be some portion of the fetal tissue. Well, when we will discuss about the complete hydratiform mold, we will see that 
the uh, spermatozoa causes the fertilization of the empty ovum which does not contain any chromosome so that is the reason in the complete mode we do not see any fetal tissue or any maternal component and it is also important when we discuss about the p57 staining so we are discussing about the clinical features of the partial hydatiform mold it mainly presents in the first trimester as the missed or the spontaneous abortion and in some rare cases even it can lead up to the term pregnancy as well and if the uh, patient present it commonly present with the vaginal bleeding pelvic pressure uterus enlarged for gestational age so here in the partial hydatiform mold the uterus in enlarged but it is not more than the dead say for example in the 16 weeks the uterus reaches the level of umbilicus but it reaches the level of umbilicus but when there is a complete mold it becomes more than the dead so at the 16 weeks it will be above the umbilicus while in terms of normal pregnancy or in the partial hydatiform mode it it is enlarged but does not go beyond the dates and while uh, there will be the increased level of beta hcg but it never goes beyond the 100000 international units which is common feature in the complete mode so discuss about the gross description is we already says that Uh, there will be the formation of the hydrophobic villi so here we can see that thin white vesicular appearance scattered hydrophobic villi along with advex with the normal appearing maternal side cotyledons or normal placenta when we will uh, make a comparison with the complete mold there will be the formation of all these hydrophobic vesicular appearance of the villi there won't be any normal placental tissue and in some portion there there could be some fetal portion as well while discussing about the microscopic features as we said earlier that there will be the two populations of the villi one would be the normal appearing and other would be the edematous so in this picture we can make a distinction that the bottom portion contains the very large edematous villi while the upper portion contains a small or the normal appearing villi so let's discuss about the these enlarged as we said that these would be the very large hydrophobic villi with abnormal counters or we can say the like a scapled appearance of the borders and in some cases there would be the formation of the cistern or a big cavity in the center while here we can see that these are the normal appearing small villi so in the partial mold histologically we will have a two distinct population which is not the feature of a complete mold another point i want to uh, they say that as we described that there would be the focal hyperplasia of the trophoblastic tissue so in this slide we can see that there is a large uh, villa with the abnormal borders or the abnormal counter and there is a focal hyperplasia of the trophoblastic tissue which is in contrast with the complete mold in the complete mold there will be the circumferential and more hyperplastic tissue of the trophoblast while if if these pregnancies goes beyond the first trimester or beyond the 14 weeks as we say that it contains some fetal portion so there would be some uh, some nucleated rbcs or some capillaries in the villi so is uh, so now only remaining point about the partial hydatid form mold is to how we will distinguish besides the histology from the complete mold so as we said that the partial mold contains the some component of the maternal genes so the stain here which is very significant and important to distinguish between the partial mold and the complete mold is the p57 
which is the cycling dependent kinase which is not important information so this gene is normally expressed by the maternal side and it is imprinted on the paternal side so in the partial mole as we have some component of the maternal side so we are expecting that the p57 will be positive in the partial mole while it will be negative in the complete mode so it is commonly expressed in the villus stromal cells and the cytotrophoblast while it will be negative in the complete mode while the caveat or the limitation of the p57 is that it cannot distinguish between the partial mole versus the non molar specimens or the non polar hydro or non polar abortions because both these contains the maternal dna so they both will express the maternal genes so this is the limitation of the p57 so here is the stain it is a nuclear stain here we can clearly see that it is staining the cytotrophoblastic or the inner layer of these hydropic villi i thank you so much